Hi, it's Melanie. Today I'm going to build a Slater's North Eastern Railway 20 ton hopper wagon. I've not built one of these before, so I start by reading the instructions. I start with the hopper itself. As usual, I remove the parts from the sprue with sprue cutters and clean them up. There is no moulding detail on the inside of the hopper on this kit. There are also obvious injection points. So I fill the injection points with modelling filler. Once it is dry, I sand it flat. Then I mark off the planking using the external moulding as a guide and scribe plank lines onto the insides. Time to glue it all together using solvent. Once it has set, I clean up the overlap at the joints and slightly round them off. I am building an earlier version of the wagon which uses wooden end stanchions, so I fit these next. Once the stanchions are set, it's time to fit the numerous wire handrails. The kit comes with jigs to help you bend the wire to the right shape. They work really well and I wish all kits had them.
fit, I glue them with super glue. Some of the holes needed opening up, so I used a pin vise and a half millimetre drill bit. If you follow the instructions and cut the wire flush with the edge of the jig, the handrail sticks out far too far and look unrealistic. It was halfway through the build that I realised, so I pulled them all off and refitted them after trimming them down. Next the buffers were fitted. With hindsight I would have done these later in the build so they wouldn't get covered in primer. The tiny collars are fiddly. Again, I use super glue to fix these. The kit does not come with wheels or bearings. Technically, the wagon should have split spoke wheels. I had regular spoke wheels and bearings in my wheels box, so I used them. I'll fit the right ones later. I fit the bearings now and let them set. It turned out later they were too loose and solvent didn't fix them, so I re glued the bearings with super glue. I masked up the underneath and gave the wagon a coat of Halford's grey plastic primer. Research shows that the North Eastern Railway Company had different greys at different points in history. Also, different wagon works have different greys as they mix their own paint. Phoenix paints do an NER grey, but I didn't have any in stock, so using photos from the internet I mixed Tamiya, medium grey and light grey to give a colour that looked about right. Since filming I've gotten a pot of NER grey and it's pretty close to the colour I came up with. Once the paint has dried, it's time to apply the transfers. Transfers come with this kit, which is nice. Many don't have them. It is easier to apply transfers to a shinier surface, so I gave the wagon a coat of semi gloss acrylic varnish. <laughs> I cut out the individual transfers and hold them in warm water until they start to lift. The water has a touch of detergent to reduce the surface tension. I dampen the wagon and use a brush to slide the transfer off of the backing paper and position it. I use a kitchen towel to wick away excess water. There were quite a few to apply, so I did this in several sessions so I didn't damage the ones already applied. Once 
Once one side was done, I gave it a quick coat of acrylic varnish as protection. This turned out to be a mistake as there was a slight reaction between the transfers and the varnish. So I used enamel varnish instead. Once the transfers are applied and protected, you can remove the masking tape and build the underframe. The individual axle boxes are fitted first. Then fit the brake shoes. When fitting these, check against the wheels to make sure everything runs freely. Then the V-hangers should be fitted. Using wire supplied in the kit as a connecting rod, it should be passed through the holes in the V-hangers and the brake gear. This is then trimmed to length. There is additional brake gear that fits between the brake shoes and around the wheels. This turned out to be rather fiddly and I got quite annoyed trying to fit it. So there's not much film. With hindsight, it is better if this is fitted before the brake shoes are fitted to the wagon. The offending part is part 13 in this diagram. Paint the brake levers and steps before you fit them to the wagon. Paint the brake levers and steps before you fit them to the wagon. At the same time, paint the subframe but leave the bit where the brake levers join the V-hangers. Also leave where the steps attach. Once the paint has dried, you can remove the brake levers, clean them up and touch up the paint. I also touched up the underframe too. The 
levers are fitted by using solvent to attach them to the V-hangers. The one without the cam fits on the side with the brake shoes. Leave the other end of the levers loose. Now you can attach the steps. Once everything has set, use a tiny amount of super glue to attach the brake levers to the body. Solvent would affect the paint. And we're done. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this build, don't forget to subscribe below.